Thank you, Abraham. Yeah. Very special. Yeah. I want to talk about co-creating. We do too. Yes, and I understand that everything is co-creating. I'm constantly co-creating. And let's also, let's put another word in there just to make it tangible and practical. Everything is relationships. Excellent. That's the next thing that I was going to come out of my mouth because I am constantly relating to something. And the first relationship that I want to foster, just given what you've been teaching me, is with myself and yes. my inner being. Yes. So my inner being is also part of all of us inner beings. And if we are all one, and we are all coming from the same, or this is what I think anyway, all coming from the same something, energy, how does the co-creating amongst all of us get mixed up? How come it's us that they are he we are here and not someone else? What brings us together? Vibrational sameness. Because I feel that I've got my own vibration and sometimes it's very different from other people that are around me, but I'm, my, maybe it's not, maybe it's the same. Maybe this analogy will help. Jerry used to play a game with Esther when they were in a restaurant and he would say, because he was contemplating this very subject and he would take two dinner plates and he would stack one on top of the other. And he would say, this is us. See how much the same we are. The edges of the plates were all aligned. This is how harmonic we are. We like the same things about life. We are reaching for same or similar things. It was his way of appreciating them. And then he would offset the plates a bit and he'd say sometimes we are with people and we're more like that we have things that are the same and things that are not those are still nice relationships sometimes we just barely have this little thing in common sometimes law of attraction doesn't bring us together at all and Esther spent a lot of time thinking about that because sometimes they would get together with people and the harmonics of all of them would be extraordinary and sometimes less and sometimes not at all. And so what he was realizing is that you have active vibrations. Now his story was about what each of their lives had brought them to when they met because while his path was very different from hers, they had come to a lot of the same things. Both of them are uplifters. Both of them are wanting to be of value. Both of them want fun. Both of them like decorum. Both of them like order and elegance and well-being. So much of what in the sifting through life, knowing what you don't want, knowing what you do want. And he didn't know it then, but what he was describing was they had very close to identical vortices, meaning that vibrationally speaking, the universe had already identified them. Law of attraction had already identified them as so harmonic that it was not possible for them to not come together. And once they were together, they began comparing notes about people they had known and they realized that there were 10 or 15 different avenues through which they would have met if it had not happened the way that it did. The law of attraction had so many more opportunities lined up for them. So the same is true of all of you and all of you. So the factors are how much of my life experience, how many life hours you might say have I spent creating this desire that's part of it how big is the desire and how much attracting power does it have that's a factor a big factor the other factor is which is the thing that you care most about in your opening words how much in vibrational harmony am I with my inner being how much am I in harmony with what's in there because if you're in harmony with what's in there and others are in harmony with what's in there then it is child's play 
to put what's in harmony together. And that's what equals the life experience that you live. And it's all the components. If you're worried about things, you line up with other people who are worried about things. If you are insecure, you line up with others who are insecure. If you are in love with life, you line up with others who are in love with life. But it's not as cut and dried as we are making it sound because most of you are not consistent about what you are offering because most of you are offering your vibration because of what you are observing in the moment. So it moves about quite a bit, but even in that there are more man hours, you might say applied to some subjects than others. And the law of attraction sorts it out. So for a long time, we've been saying there are two ways for you to know what you've got going on in your vibrational mix. And today let's take those words into a further place of understanding. There are two ways for you to understand what your vibrational mix equaling your point of attraction is your vibrational mix, your traction point. There are two ways of knowing what it is, what's coming and how you feel, how you feel is pre manifestational. What arrives is post manifestational. And of course it is through both of those awarenesses that you begin to decide how you really want to offer your vibrations. It seems like they are happening at the same time. What does? Well, the, what's coming and how I feel. Well, then you want to be more sensitive because if you don't feel it till it gets there, you weren't paying attention. That really isn't what's happening. Of course, once it comes, Esther says frequently, well, saw that coming. You can anticipate what's coming based upon the way you feel. After a while, your moods will be a really good indicator. Sometimes you'll even say, I can feel what must be coming. I can't see it, but when it gets here, I'll recognize it. <laughs> now we want to take this a little further because we don't want to leave this in this muddy place. We want to bring it to a practical place because we don't want you to worry about what law of attraction is doing with what you've been offering because what's coming about is just fine. The important thing to know is that it's always moldable. That's why we say you can't get it wrong. And the reason you can't get it wrong is because you never get it done. So at any point in time, you can assess and regroup and make a new decision. The thing that trips most humans up is that when something happens that they are not really enjoying that much, that's when they try to regroup and make a new decision. And that's when they try to think different thoughts, but the momentum just won't let them do it. And that's why we're having this conversation about getting out ahead of it. We would like you to understand that you've already launched the rockets of desire and that your vortex already is gathering the cooperative components and that your work is much more simple than we are making it seem with this conversation conversation. Your work is just to get happy and everything that you've ever wanted and everything that you've ever wanted and how it combines together is there to begin revealing itself to you moment by moment, by moment, by moment, by moment. And so when you begin being consciously aware of the pieces coming together, that's when you begin to relax and not try so hard to manipulate or manage your life. That's when you give others the freedom and the leeway to do whatever they want, because whatever it is that they are thinking, even about you is irrelevant to you because you've got your own vibrational relationship with who you are and what you want. So someone who's insecure, who's looking at you and looking for things to justify their insecurity, you're not picking up on them because you're not even in the range of insecurity. And that's what we mean by becoming a master. Don't try to be a master of your thoughts, be a master of your emotions. Decide that you are the master of having fun, that you are the master of being in a good mood, that you are really resilient and that good moods are easy for you. Decide that you are flexible and free feeling. Esther loves the word lighthearted. She remembers that feeling of being at work, and then not being at work and the feeling of a little bit of bondage at being at work. And then the feeling of freedom when she was on vacation from work. And so every day she would say to Jerry, once I would get in the car, let's go get a Coke and pretend like we're on vacation. And the thing that was funny about that, they were always on vacation. 
when you understand that you create your own reality you never have that feeling of bondage again but Esther still related to that delicious feeling of contrast that feeling of upliftment of oh for right now in this moment I am really free and she liked that feeling that feeling of movement upward just now she said to you do you ever feel the feeling of swooning and what that feeling is that's the feeling of energy moving upward in other words Esther was high flying she's been having a good time already she's enjoying the people that she's been engaged with already this morning she could not feel better she wrote it on her list as she was chilling and getting herself prepared for I have never felt better she is writing to herself I love how I feel and yet still she stands here and as good as she feels once she really with intentionality relaxes with the intention of blending or allowing the blending of her energies with ours the feeling of swooning the feeling of moving from not being on vacation to more vacation as you realize that you can feel better and better no matter how good you feel the furniture in your room can be better <laughs> everything everything can be better everything can be better this bowl is too big for that shelf put it over there ah really good that plant is not getting enough sunlight put it over there much better this chair belongs on the porch put it on the porch that is more seating for my friends bring it inside her room doesn't look anything like it used to don't do that always looking for something that feels a little better that's the nature you are expansive beings you cannot stand still you can't stand still there's always more and there's always data around you to help you in the forming of those new ideas and when you're free flowing so that as the idea comes the inspiration for the movement comes too. life just is delicious when you are living it like that did we get to what you were reaching for yes thank you really good, really good.